What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Vader, a parole bench warmer. Welcome back to another card discussion video where we talk about underrated cards and duel links and their potential future use. And I want to talk about a card that I was using last season as a tech, and I noticed that it's a series, so I might as well just talk about the entire series of cards, and that is the sealing ceremony cards. And these cards require you an upkeep of a certain attribute and you can banish one or two cards from your opponent's graveyard now this sounds very small and not really impactful but when you look at how the meta is right now it is very graveyard reliant a lot of decks have put cards in the graveyard for their use later on in the in the, the future of the duel cards like dragon spirit of white if you look at vampires all of the vampire cards and if you look at like any other smaller deck like Destiny Heroes, Destiny Hero, you can banish Celestial so they can't draw two. You can banish Spellbook cards so Spellbook players can't banish things with Fate. It, it, there's a lot of implications that you can use with these still in ceremony cards to slow your opponent down and they can actually be used to put the monsters that you need in the graveyard or banished or however you need it so that you can further your plays while hindering your opponents. And I thought that that was a really cool way of like going about the deck that I was trying to use last season. And we're gonna talk about all of them and their potential use and if they have a potential use. Because I think that these cards really do fit in where the meta is right now. And I figured if I tried them out and I showed you guys what they are, maybe you guys can try them out and unstick the decks that you've been trying to build yourselves and maybe keep going in the meta, maybe hit KOG, who knows? But let's go and discuss these cards. The first one, and in my opinion, actually the worst one out of this series, is Sealing Ceremony of Rhyton. This card requires you to send a wind type monster back into your main deck at the bottom of your main deck to banish two cards from your opponent's graveyard. Now, the banish, like up to two cards in your opponent's graveyard, is fantastic, but to send a wind monster from your field to your main deck is actually horrible. Like, there's no deck that can take it like good advantage of this there's no win type decks in my opinion no win type decks that are exist in the meta at the moment unless it's like harpies if you're still playing harpies you know kudos to you but you can't really use this card to your benefit like it's really not that great the only way i can see this card seeing a future potential use is actually if we got Reborn Tengu, so you can just consist consistently loop Reborn Tengu and banish two cards from your opponent's graveyard, but that's a little busted. <laughs> that's a little busted. But let's go on to the next one. The next one, and actually in my opinion, the second worst is Sealing Ceremony of Katan. If you're running a fire type deck, you can put this in your deck. You banish one fire type monster to banish a monster that in your banish a card in your opponent's graveyard. This is okay, maybe in Hazy's, but Hazy doesn't really want to run any back row if at all. And um, any other deck that can banish fire type monsters in their graveyard, if they can put fire type monsters in their graveyard and actually further their plays that way, if the monsters when they get banished they get effects. So the only effect, the only decks that can see this get put getting put in, sorry about that, is actually Flame Vell and. And, uh Laval's like no one's really playing those they're really like crappy at the moment and I'm pretty sure no matter what cards they add to them they're gonna be sh really shitty until we get like XYZ's and like Laval with Laval Vol Chain but that's not happening but <laughs> But banishing a fire type monster to banish one card from your opponent's graveyard is also really not good, like at all, in my opinion at least. It's not good until we get something like Shirinui, because they actually want to be banished, and then you you're you're disrupting your opponent on that play as well. But these are the two worst, so they only get better from here, right? And now we move on to the card that I was actually teching in my Sea Stealth Attack deck is Sealing Ceremony of Sweeton. Now, I have a lisp, so that was very hard to say. But this card, you just have to send a water type monster from your hand to the graveyard and you can banish one card from your opponent's uh, graveyard. Now, that's okay in a Sea Stealth Attack deck because there's a lot of cards that you'd rather have in your graveyard. It, you don't mind them being in your graveyard and sending them straight from your hand straight to the graveyard is fantastic. You know how many times Sea Stealth Attack players set Fishboard Planter onto the field 
and then wait like they pass like as if that's a good play you can get otk like crazy in that way because people can summon two three monsters on the field that's big enough to run over not only run over your your little fishboard planter but then do enough damage and you can't even come back from that now if you set if you have this on the field you can send fishboard planter from your hand to the graveyard banish your opponent's card and now special summon fishboard planter by milling a top card of your graveyard of uh, milling the top card from your deck hopefully at the water monster and see stealth attack they really run like what four back row it's really not that big of a chance of hitting the back row and you get a monster on your field at the cost of banishing your opponent's monster and it's really not that bad other cards that you want to send to the graveyard is what citadel well since it can special summon itself in the graveyard and also dragon knights because it can special summon itself in the graveyard that's not like that those are cards that you don't mind being put in the graveyard and if you're putting in the graveyard to banish your opponent's familiar or retainer or dragon spirit of white to stop them from being able to stop you more power to you go ahead and do it if you can and lastly a card that i wish that i could play in a deck that i uh, rephrase i wish that there's a deck that we can play this in is ceiling ceremony of mokutan this you just tribute a face up earth monster on your field banish two cards from your opponent's graveyard now i think this is huge in magnet so you magnet players out there that really want a, a way to keep up with the meta without having to rely on your big beefy boys this can actually really really work because your magnets want to be in the graveyard especially like this still activates delta's effect so if you went off and went like um doki doki send a magnet send summon data uh summon delta then pitch a magnet straight from the graveyard maybe you run transmodify or downbeat and you can go into uh, beta in some way shape or form go into delta on your opponent's turn and then send delta to the graveyard banish two of their cards and then you get Valkyrian out? Dude, that is fantastic, man. And you're just milling your deck and just moving your resource around in your deck, get ending on a really decent board. Maybe you even end up on Gaia Plate because now you have cards in your graveyard to banish to summon Gaia Plate. Hell, you can even use this card as um to keep the maintenance cost on gaia plate by attributing a face up earth monster on your field then gaia plates uh maintenance cost activates you just banish that card you just tributed and you manipulated your opponent's graveyard so they couldn't use those cards that they put to the graveyard to search their deck or banish cards on your field and so on and so forth i think that's actually phenomenal but what trumps all of these cards as a like the unsearchable trap card that you know you're playing in your deck hopefully you draw it in your first turn to disrupt your your opponent and hopefully you're going first sealed tombs dude sealed tombs is a skill you don't have to run it within the deck it literally just is a skill it's outside of the 20 cards that you crammed into your deck so you can have more space in your deck for staples or back row and whatever and it still does the same thing your opponent can't special summon monsters from the graveyard or banish cards from the graveyard effectively stopping all the cards that you would be running these cards in your deck you would be stopping the decks that run those effects and so on and so forth but if your deck cannot work with sealed tombs in my example i need to run mystic depths in order to play sea stealth attack so i can't run sealed tombs and protect myself from other decks that do all the manipulation shit that i fear you can run some of these sealed ceremony cards in your deck if you fit the uh, the attribute cost and conditions for these cards and i think that they're actually really good and they can hinder a lot of top meta decks and they won't even know what's gonna hit them because these cards don't see any play at all but that's my opinion i want to know what you guys think in the comment section below let me know if you guys like these cards don't like these cards tell me if my voice sounds weird who fucking knows just tell me something in the comment section below I would love to hear from you guys, but that's the end of this video. It's a wrap.